Um, hello, everybody, and welcome to our talk with Karen and Louise. We just wanted to, in preparation for our Transformational Channeling Day on uh, 1 October in Amsterdam, we wanted just to give everyone an introduction to who we are and a little bit about channeling and what we do. So I just want to say welcome, and hi, Louise, how are you? <laughs> hi, Karen, I'm great, thanks. Good. Why don't you start, because, um, yeah, since I'm hosting a little bit, why don't you start and just give your background as to um, how you got started channeling and you know what was what led up to that moment, and and then then you can also maybe say what you and you and Icon really talk about in your channeling. Okay. Okay. Um, I feel like there was a kind of a process that led up to the day when the channeling spontaneously happened. So mm -hmm. I guess I rewind about maybe fifteen years, mm -hmm. um, and it started with. Uh, me having what we refer to as ESP experiences, so that's extrasensory perception experiences. And I think the first thing that happened to me was I was having a nap one afternoon yeah. on the sofa and I experienced sleep paralysis. Yeah. And sleep, I had no idea what was happening. I thought I was dying. Um, sleep paralysis is a phenomena where the body stays asleep and the and you wake up. So I was awake, mm -hmm. but I couldn't move my body and I couldn't open my eyes. It was like my body was a dead body. So I thought I died and it was a pretty scary experience actually. And that happened to me a few more times. Um, so I wanted to know what was going on. So I started researching on the internet and I found out that that was sleep paralysis. And, and then I started having out of body experiences spontaneously. So I'd just be asleep in my bed at night, and the next thing I knew, I'd be flying around the room. Was it always in your own room, or did you go other places, or? Um, this stuff, yeah, it happened in other places too. Yeah. yeah. Um, not just in my room. Yeah. Um, and then I started to see energy, um, like see energy around people and colors around people. Oh, wow. And... I started to realize that, wow, there's more to reality than I thought there was before. Yeah. Um, the the sleep paralysis and the out of body experience was kind of my first intuitive knowing that there was more to me than this physical body. Yeah. I existed uh, somehow. Um, I don't know how to put it in words. Just yeah, there. I guess there is more to me than the physical body. That's not what I was. I had some kind of essence. That was, was that was that was that opposed to your uh, current line of thinking? Did you have a, a time period where you, where you were like, whoa, what is happening? And and was there resistance to that idea, or did you just instantly accept it and and know that that this was? Do you know what I mean? Was it like diametrically opposed to your worldview or? Did you just kind of go with the flow and said, okay, and accept it? Well, I didn't really think about these things yeah. before I had these experiences. Okay. So it was so, totally new for you. Yeah, it kind yeah. of just um, woke me up and made me think about, like, what am I exactly? What What is this reality? Like, yeah. what what is this energy that I'm suddenly seeing? Yeah. And the experiences were getting more and more extreme. So... <laughs> I would start to look at people and then their face would kind of morph into their past life, who they were as a past life and information would come to me um, about who they were and, and, and uh, how what they experienced in that life was affecting them in this life. Oh, oh that's good. And, um, and then I started seeing actual beings in my bedroom at night. Um, <laughs> And then it got really scary for me. Did the uh, beings interact with you, or they just sort of were standing there staring at you? or? Yeah, they interacted with me, and they would oh. take me onto their ships. And, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, it was a very scary time for me, and it actually reached a point where it was getting destructive for my life because 
I was so scared of it happening that I would force myself to stay awake the whole night <laughs> so that they wouldn't be able to come get me. Oh, wow. And, uh, and I was experiencing sleep deprivation. I was, I was not functioning well. And I was working as a teacher at that time. So I was going to class and I was like half asleep and it was really challenging for me to function. Um, and I think the, a big turning point after that was when I moved to Amsterdam and I got a teaching job mm -hmm. um, in Amsterdam and a woman from India came. I heard about this woman. And I didn't know much about her really, but uh, people were talking about her. Yeah. Uh, and she's regarded as probably one of the most deeply recognized beings on the planet right now. Yeah. Being deeply recognized as a, as an enlightened being. People see her in that way, and and they call her the hugging saint. Right. Um. Because she hugs everyone. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. So um, I decided to go along and see what it was all about. And uh, I didn't really know much about it, but I had to wait maybe 12 hours mm. and just to see her. You get a ticket. There were hundreds of people there. Yeah. And I think it was like one or two in the morning when finally my turn came and I'd been standing in this long line and there was loud Indian music playing, a live band, and a big crowd of people around there. And um, I, w I was pushed forward, and I got my hug, and she shoved a piece of chocolate in my <laughs> mouth, and someone whisked me away, and it was uh, it was like uh, disorienting. It was very intense energy field, very noisy, lots of people. And I really felt like, whoa, I need to lie down. Yeah. So I went in the back room and I found a quiet space and I lay down there and, uh, and I closed my eyes and I started to see this color purple here, like something opening here. And then I heard this voice say to me, go to India. What you seek, you shall find there. What accent did they have? Was it a... <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember having a particular accent. It just uh, I'm just joking it was with you. kind of neutral. Like, I didn't, like, <laughs> Did you hear it outside your uh, head or inside? Um, I don't remember now. Yeah. It was just very clear to me that it was yeah. not me saying that. Like yeah. it, I didn't know where this voice had come from. Yeah. And I was kind of shocked by it, but it had a, a, a deep impact on me. And so yeah. much so that I decided to quit my job and I... Was it, did you quit like straight away the next day or was it like within a few uh, months or...? No, it was probably a few weeks. Oh, wow. You know, I, I thought about it and I was like, wow, am I really going to do this? Am I really going to go to India? You know, I, I've got this this nice job. I have a good income. I was teaching at the university here. Mm. Um, my career was doing pretty well at this point, and I have this apartment. What am I going to do? I need to find someone for the apartment. So all these thoughts were going around in my head, but it just it kept pulling me in my heart, and I couldn't ignore it. It was getting stronger and stronger. And uh, I was actually going backwards and forwards for a while between the idea of going or not, because it just seemed so crazy when I tried to rationalize it. Yeah with my mind and then I started to doubt maybe I didn't actually hear a voice you know it sounds a little bit crazy maybe I imagined the whole thing <laughs> but it this pull started getting stronger and stronger and um, I, I couldn't ignore it anymore so all my stuff went into storage I left the apartment I left the job and I just got a one-way ticket to India and I went to a place called Rishikesh mm. uh, at the foothills of the Himalaya on the river Ganges and it's a, it's a place that's renowned for yoga and meditation. There's a lot of um, yogis go there and they meditate in caves. And yeah. I spent about three months with two teachers. Um, and it was a very powerful experience for me. I experienced a lot of uh, openings inside myself. Yeah. Um, I experienced a lot of inner transformation and I met a lot of the shadow aspect 
parts and I saw parts of myself I hadn't seen before. Wow. Um, there was one day in particular that really changed my life, which was an experience I had when I was sat in a room of maybe a thousand people with this teacher and the energy was very strong and um, he was doing a kind of um, almost like a meditation, like guiding everybody um, to reflect within and um, a kind of self-inquiry to discover the true nature of the self. And I was following his guidance and all of a sudden, um, I don't really have words to describe it, but it felt like my mind just exploded, like pfft, like my mind was gone and there was nothing and everything all at the same time. Yeah. And I came out and I couldn't even speak. I was just like, <laughs> everything changed. Oh, the reality awesome. was different. Yeah. Everything that I'd been listening to, everything I've been hearing about spirituality and everything I've been reading about, suddenly it all made sense. Wow. I knew what they were talking about now. That was like the, when you fall in love, all the love songs make sense kind of thing. This was all the all the spiritual teachings made sense all at once. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, and that really changed everything. It was very clear to me from that moment. Um, I wasn't going back to teaching. Wow. I found something much more valuable, much more precious. Mm. And I wanted to know more about this. I wanted to ex experience this on deeper levels. And, um, and after India, I went to Israel um, with my partner Gilad. He's, he's Israeli spent some time in Israel and um, I started to have thoughts that, uh, okay, what am I going to do with my life now? Yeah. I was living off of my savings and they were starting to run out and I, I need to generate an income. Um, but I wanted to do something that was like really aligned for me, that, right. that that was the my reason for incarnating yeah. um, your life's work yeah, yeah yeah I wanted to know what my life's work was I wanted to know my purpose and I made a prayer inside of my heart and I really prayed to God or the universe or the divine or whatever you want to call it please please just show me what it is that you want me to do whatever it is I will do it and I was totally surrendered and I really felt in my heart like pure surrender and it wasn't like an idea from my mind yeah. It really, it was like a real prayer from a heart. Right. And uh, the next day I was meditating and I was in a very deep meditation. I was lying down and my body went, went kind of numb. Yeah. And, and suddenly it felt like something opened up here. And I just had this feeling like I knew, wow, I'm channeling. And it felt kind of natural to me, like... I've been doing it all my life, like it felt intuitive, like I knew what to do. I just felt like I needed someone to ask me a question. Right. Like there was all this information here and mm -hmm. for it to come out, like it wanted to flow through a tap almost, um, I needed someone to ask me a question so it could come out. And right. just Isn't that funny? That's a funny phenomena, I think. I don't I don't know why, but not to stop you, but I, I, I'm always fascinated how that stimulates the flow mm. of, of information but yeah yeah it's like um a trigger for it or something yeah, yeah. um so just at that moment gilad came in the room mm. um so i was in my meditation i was like oh great this is wonderful this is my chance so i said and i was in a really deep meditation so i could barely even speak properly so i kind of whispered to him and he looked at me and he was like Louise, are you okay? Uh, and, and I said again, ask me a question. And he said, Louise, what's going on? Are you okay? And I said again, ask me a question. And he was just getting more worried about me, like I was asking <laughs> And he came over to me and he's like, Louise, what's going on? Are you all right? So I was like, okay, I need to, I need to come out with this meditation. It's not going to work. <laughs> he's not going to ask this question. 
So I came out of the meditation and I told him what I had experienced and I said, okay, tomorrow let's try again. I'll meditate and again and we'll see if it happens again. So I did it again the next day and the same thing happened and this time I was ready with these questions and he asked, first of all, like, um, who are you and where are you from and what is your intention? And it was Icon and... Um, they explained that actually they didn't have a name, that they're just a, a collective a kind of energy, but they wanted to use a name icon so that we would have something to refer to them as because we're familiar with using names. Yeah. And they explained that they exist in the ninth dimension, located um, physically where our Pleiadian star system is, more specifically Alcyon. I think that's the central star of the system. Um, but they said that if we were to go there with our spaceships, we wouldn't find them because they're in a different dimension. Um, and in the beginning, the information was coming through very slowly. And, and they would say all the time, searching for word, searching for word. And, and the more I did it, it started to get more fluid and right. more fluent. Um, and yeah, my friends heard what I was doing and they thought it was fun and they wanted to ask questions. Um, oh. And I started putting videos on YouTube and then other people started thinking, oh, this was fun. And very quickly, actually, it became my work. Wow. Uh, I've been doing it ever since. I've been traveling around the world doing group channeling events. And I just feel so grateful that this came to me and that I can share it with people and... Yeah, it's wonderful. So what is Icon sort of, do they have a message or a theme? Is there, or is it, do they have a sort of central tenet that they talk about all the time? If you want yeah, to say. They're, they're really empowering. Um, so they want us to recognize that our own power is within us mm -hmm. and uh, everything we need to know we have access to within ourselves. And uh, if people try to ask them questions, like kind of in a lazy way, like, oh, you just tell me what I should do. What should I do with my life icon? You give me the answer. Yeah. They won't have any of that. Yeah. Uh, but what they really want to do is to support us so that we can figure that out for ourselves. Because they don't. They say that they don't want to create a relationship of dependency with us where we see them as kind of the superior all-knowing beings and we need to ask them for information so that we can function. They want to support us to recognize that we also have access to that information just as they do so that we can meet them as equals. Right, right. Because they really honor us and they see us as divine beings and yeah. they say that we've forgotten that, we've forgotten our true nature. And yeah. they really point to people to recognize their true nature and they want people to have a direct experience of their true nature right. so um they're very gentle they're very loving they're very wise they're also quite funny sometimes uh, they have a strong character yeah. strong personality yeah um, that's clearly different from mine so people are sometimes a little bit shocked when they see me channel for the first time because I don't know why my voice changes and I move differently and it's really like there's another being there. It's a little bit strange. <laughs> well, there is another being there, but it's a yeah. group of beings, right? Is, is it sort of a, do, do you visualize them in any way? Do you have any kind of visual of them when you're channeling or? I never see them. Mm -hmm. I, I get a sense of the color blue mm -hmm. and the feeling of blue, but I never actually see them because they don't actually have a physical state so it's just energy so I kind of I feel them when they're connected to me mm -hmm. and sometimes when they're sharing information with me they'll show me um, uh, an image or a diagram or something yeah um, and then I try to put that into words right yeah that's cool I, I know um, that I also see blue that's funny you say that so uh, yeah and uh, do you know what you channel Theos right right Right. For those that people that don't know, and right. do you know w where they exist? Uh, they they don't exist. They they don't identify with any kind of a race, um, but they exist. Sort of, they've said they exist within the Shekinah, which is in the in the 
it's a high dimension. They're non-physical. They have they have form, but they don't have physical bodies. And um, within that Shekinah, which is a star as well, but it's it's they say that's with where the Holy Spirit dwells is where they are. Mm. So um, I don't know that they when you ask them, you know, where they are, they just say they are, which yeah, you know, they don't really have, you know, I. They've said before we're not standing on the corner of eternity and uh, you know in another they don't have like a physical address but yeah. they are they are they are everywhere and and nowhere i i, I would suppose but they're yeah. wherever their consciousness wants to 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 be and to focus on so that's where okay. they 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 are so you couldn't find them also with a ship and um you know they 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 say that it's great to wait on ships and everything but most of the contact will come inside and it's that's why they say it's intergalactic they mean inside it's internal and the contact that we will have with many races and many beings will only be inside Mm. it's for each one of us to to make those connections and and everyone in, in fact can and that's why, you know, as we are starting to wake up and everything, that that's happening more and more. So, yeah. And do you want to share with the people that don't know how your channeling started? Yes, I do. I, I, I've, I have a couple of things that I've been thinking about lately that I didn't really put two and two together. But some of the things that you were saying about the out-of-body experiences, I recognize that. And I used to have that sort of go into that lucid dreaming state when I would go into a when I lay down for a nap on my couch in the afternoon I would have that uh, situation and I also had some out-of-body stuff when I was a little bit like around in my teens I had some of that Um, but really it really kind of quite began when um, I was a little kid and I was really um, yeah as five five years old and I just I wanted to know God You know, I wanted to know God and I wanted to be able to talk to God because I thought that it was really not fair that, you know, everybody in the Bible got to talk to God, but but I couldn't talk to God and it didn't make any sense to me. And I just refused to accept that as a reality. And I would, I would be outside or I would, you know, be talking into the air and just sort of stating my case as to why that I didn't think it was fair and why that I should be able to talk to God and God should talk to me and and all these things and so at one moment in the midst of that uh, insistency I just heard we are here and we love you and then I was instantly suspicious as to you know was it me or was it really some kind of you know I didn't I, I thought it was God I didn't think I thought is this really, you know, is this really you? And, and um, they assured me that they were there, they loved me, and that they would answer any questions that I had. So I sort of started this relationship with them. Um, they gave me as a sort of visual proof this little dove. Um, and the dove is also the symbol of the Shekinah. So, um, but they gave me this little dove, and they told me that I would always see the dove when they were talking to me. And so I always see the dove with my eyes closed, but I also see it with my eyes open. So sometimes if they want my attention, that little dove will just sort of appear. And I just know that they are, you know, focusing on me at that moment. And so I just trusted that always. And um, I didn't have a name for them for a very long time because I didn't ever ask the name. I just thought it was my yeah, my inner voice and my knowing, and it was really for me. So it wasn't like I had this idea that I had to share this with anybody. And um, I learned very quickly that other people weren't having this kind of experience. So I didn't share it with a lot of people. I told my mom, you know, and she just, you know, she didn't, she didn't not support me, but she just sort of, it's like, okay. You know, sometimes she would ask me questions like, why do I think this is this way or why do I think that is that way? And I would give her quite informed answers. So, you know, in that way, some of it would she would accept, some of it she wouldn't. But they would teach me things like quantum physics principles. Um, They have a principle they call all time at the same time, which just means everything is now. And they, um, you know, they showed me all time is sort of a linear, a linear 
little little moments of time, like little comic book pictures. And they said you can really move through all of these moments if you want to, just by focusing. And, and therefore, they said to me, time travel, in fact, would be possible. They didn't really explain to me other dimensions and things like that, but they showed me that everything that could or would possibly happen was already there. And it was for us mm -hmm. to move to any of it. So I took that very, very seriously, and I told people all about that all the time. And it was way before they started talking about it in quantum physics. So, you know, um, I was later proved correct. So I was happy about that. And then um, as I got through uh, high school and college, I sort of started studying more Eastern um, philosophies. And I studied, coming to the channeling, I'll just tell you something. I studied something called Silva Mind Control. I don't know if you know what that is. No, I've never heard of that. Well, it was very popular. It was, it was by a guy named Jose Silva in the 70s. And he was a, a like a just a farm, not, I don't want to say just, but he was a farm hand and he had children and he really wanted them. He's poor uh, from South America or Mexico. So please forgive me. I don't know what, which one, but he wanted his children to do very well in school. So he started reading all kinds of things about, you know, visualization and creating your reality. And he started teaching his children how to visualize something. Mm -hmm. You know, visualizing themselves doing well in school, visualizing themselves getting good grades, visualizing themselves up, um, achieving goals. And so he developed this system that he found really worked. And what he would do is he taught them how to meditate and go, and they would go down into sort of the um, delta state of meditation. And so I had always had a thing where um, I, I would gone to church and when we would sing, I would go really into trance. Like when we would start to pray, I would call it like going up. I would mm. just already go into a state very easily. And I would fall into trance very easy if I was reading a book that was uh, about something like a metaphysical subject or something, or magic or any of those things, I would really fall into a trance. And sometimes it was very hard to get me out of it. And um, and I know that when I did Silver Mind Control, it was just very easy for me to go right into that mindset. And um, so when I was watching an Abraham uh, video on, in 2000, I think 2000. Abraham Hicks. Abraham Hicks. It was mm. in 2010, I believe. Um, I, I was typing, you know, everyone would type where they're from in the, the, the uh scrolling chat and all of a sudden I was like hi from Holland and it had my name you know I didn't yeah. even have a username it was just Karen Newman and all of a sudden I saw go by is that Karen Newman from you know Charleston South Carolina and I and I thought yeah who was it and she was like hi it's Priscilla and and uh we were you know those things were scrolling by so you have to type really fast and you have to look really fast and we were able to, it turned out to be a friend who had been my first metaphysical teacher. Um, she had, when I was like 19 years old, I had gone to a class that they were teaching like intro to your angels, or I think that's what it was. It was intro to your angels. She did some other classes too, but that was the one that I first met her and her partner, Michael. And Michael was a channel and he mm -hmm. was doing uh, automatic writing channeling, but he would, um, you would come in for a reading with him and then he would talk to you and then he would just start writing. And then they would read to you what he had written about you. But that was Priscilla that saw me in this chat. And it turns out that even though she was from the US and had moved to Sedona not too long after I met her, that she had moved to France only a couple of years before. So she was living in the south of France and we were able to connect. And then a few weeks later, she came to my house because we hadn't seen each other and all this time and while we were we were talking she said to me you know i'm really we had talked about all the old times and all the channeling and all that stuff and how she really like really was loved abraham hicks and she said you know i'm really surprised you're not a channel <laughs> and i said well why you know why why would i um and so she you know she said she said i just feel like i should tell you that you should think about it and so I thought, oh, okay. But you were already channeling. You just didn't realize I, it, right? I, I didn't. Well, yeah, I was already talking to Theos my whole life. 
Yeah. But I didn't have a. I didn't think that I didn't ever have a name for them. I I didn't I didn't think about them as being beings, yeah. other than my. It's other than my kind of knowing that this knowing that I had this communication, this relationship. I really thought I was just having this sort of, you know, it changed my perception. Like when I was really little, I thought it was God. You know, and then as I started to understand it wasn't God, but it was m maybe more like angels or something. I wasn't really clear, but it just felt like this love energy that I was communicating with that told me things. And I, and I, I will say this, I had a wisdom about life and about love and about principles that other people didn't seem to have as quick in, in the same way as I did. Yeah. And they had showed me also, um, when I was really young, a Bible verse, because I didn't know, again, I was really serious about wanting to know and experience God. And um, they, they showed me a Bible verse that said, if you, you know, if you love God and hate your neighbor, then you're a liar, because how can you love God who you've not seen and hate your neighbor who you have seen? And they told me that was all I needed to know, that I needed to love everyone. And that was really the thing they brought me back to constantly, is this love or not love. And when I would look at religions, I would look at the part of the religion and I would think, is this love or not love? And it never came me, you know, some people get disillusioned with religion, I would become disillusioned with religion, but I was never disillusioned with God. I was always disillusioned with the practices of non-love, <laughs> you know, the best way to yeah. say it. So I was always in pursuit of this, you know, purity of, of intent and purity of love. And so that's what that was. They were always teaching me that. And I started to get into a little bit of um, reading, you know, Eastern philosophies and, and, and a little bit of a little bit of Hinduism and, um, but not deep, deep, you know, and then just surface stuff. But I was looking for the stuff that reinforced what I already knew. And, um, I started a radio show, uh, at, around somewhere around the same time. But at one moment when I, when she had said to me, you know, do you want to start channeling? And I thought, I, I just couldn't figure out why or what I would say, or, you know, I, it didn't seem like that would be something for me. And then I started talking to them and I, and they, they started saying to me, do you want a channel? And I thought, no, why? No, I was really resistant to it. And, and I called, um, this woman who's been another, like a lifelong teacher of me and, um, this wonderful lady named Caroline Hart, who's now passed on, but she was like a second mother to me, a spiritual mother. She had done, you know, she knew everything about, she was my a Reiki master and I'd taken Reiki from her and all these things. And I told her and she said, well, you know, just sit with it. And if it feels right to you, then do it. Mm -hmm. So I thought, no. And then I, I did some sort of meditation and I heard them again. Do you want a channel? And, you know, they're saying to, it's my choice, but they kept asking me the question. <laughs> so I said, I said, well, I guess. And then I said, well, who are you? And they said, we are Theos. And then they quickly explained to me that they had chosen that name specifically for me, for the comfort of my knowing. Because Theos, when I looked it up, means, uh, means word of God or knowledge of God. Mm. And, and I, but, but, but that was in 2010, and I didn't have a name for them. So I started just doing sort of Q&A like writing, sitting in front of the computer, like asking the question out loud and then just writing what came into my, my brain. And they just started giving me the information and they, you know, said, we want you to, um, we're here to, uh, prop up your, you know, your energy in order to, you know, let you discover more of who you are and bring you into your own awareness. And, and then they would say who you are is love and that everything is one. And, and they wanted to talk about oneness and love. And so I started, you know, having these conversations with them. But it wasn't until 2012 that I actually channeled them through my mouth, <laughs> you know, with the, you know, with my voice. And how did that happen the first time? Well, I, because this, it, it was an ongoing sort of negotiation of, you know, I guess my own thing of like, because they'd always just been talking to me and I thought, well, 
why am I going to do this? But I, but finally, I, I just sort of got used to the idea and I thought, okay, I guess let's just try it. I mean, it was really a non, an ongoing negotiation. And so I sat there and I meditated and I just knew how to get into that space, you know, where mm-hmm. I was able to meditate and I would sort of shift my consciousness and I could just feel this sort of, you know, need to like let words out. I had no yeah. idea what would come out, but I just had this sort of like kind of feeling. And then all of a sudden I heard, you know, we are Theos. But it wasn't like that. It was more like we are Theos. <laughs> you know, very, very, very. And the energy felt very heavy. And I, and I felt really like it was too big of an energy to come through my, you know, my small body. And I just said, call me on the phone. It's too much. I can't take it, you know. <laughs> And so they, they just said, well, we'll work with you. And they, they pulled, it's like they pulled back their energy a little bit so that it wouldn't feel so heavy. And then the voice came out and it was sort of very staccato. It was sort of like, we are Theos. And I was like, it was like computer language or something. And I said, well, this isn't going to work. And so we, negoti- we negotiated the, the voice really of just coming through. Yeah. And so that's somebody calling. But, um, we, so I guess that was the confirmation of the negotiating the voice. But, uh, so then they, they, they sort of had a very serene sound. You know, they were more like, we are Theos, you know, like yeah. that. And it stayed really like that for a couple of years, this very serene, trancy voice that they had. And, um, but so I just would do those little, I would do little recordings in the house because I didn't have anybody to ask me questions. And I was really afraid to like tell anybody Yeah. to that. Yeah. And I thought, how am I going to rationalize this? And at that time I was doing a lot of mediumship and I, and I had a very good friend and she's like a, you know, a twin soul for me. She's just such a good friend. And, and, you know, she was just saying, you just have to do it. You just have to let it out. And she was starting a little bit to channel as well at that time, um, but she was doing mostly automatic writing. And so she would ask a few questions and things started coming a little bit um, faster. And, and at this time I had a radio show and I had told one of the other radio hosts, um, you know, I'm channeling. And she said, oh, well, I'll bring you on and we'll, we'll channel. I thought, oh, okay. <laughs> so so I, I, I went on the show and I, and I went in the trance and she started asking me questions and just, this information that I had never knew was in there just came out of me. And I thought, wow, this is really weird. And there was no, um, there was no break. Like I'm very, uh, uh, what I'm talking. And there was never a break in what they said. There was always, there's such a flow to what they said. That, you know, there was no hesitation in the, what they would share. And, and it's just stuff came out and I thought, this is really real. This isn't, I know this isn't me. And I guess that was more of my, you know, a little bit of my fear of, am I making this up? You know, because maybe, but it wasn't. And I thought, this is really something. This is really, and it was such a beautiful interview. And I thought, okay. And then I thought, I'm a channel. <laughs> so from then on, I started channeling. And uh, I, I would channel on my radio show. And right after I started channeling, I got another radio show. So I was doing two, and I was doing two shows. And, um just questions you know I just couldn't get enough of questions so anything anybody wanted to ask I just was like ask me ask me you know because I wanted to also know well yeah (laughs) what was going to be a lot of fun isn't it yeah and uh and so when I was first started channeling you know I was really um I was really sort of there but just listening and then at one moment uh they said to me you know we want you to open your eyes because we want you to experience that. Um, they want they wanted me to, to experience and they're, they're seeing through their eyes a little bit. And so I thought, okay. And I didn't know if that would knock me out of trance or what would happen, but I opened my eyes and it was just like seeing the world with kind of special glasses on. You know, mm. seeing color around people, but seeing like the brightness around their heart and the beauty that they see everything with just becomes 
so beautiful that you can only just stand a little bit in awe of it because you just know that it's perfect, that it's, and you just feel this love exchange through whatever you're looking at, you know, and, and it's perfect and it's exactly the way it needs to be. And you appreciate the, the being that made it, the, the, the being that it is, what it will become, all of those things. And like the, the math, the, the, the grand scheme of things. And it's just a amazing way to see the world. And, um, then they wanted me to pick up my dog while I was in a shelling state, just to experience that interaction. And I wouldn't say my dog knew any different, but I was high for like days just after holding her and getting to see her as just, just this pure love energy that was loving me back. It was just incredible. But even, you know, you, I can pick up a spoon and be equally in awe with the spoon, which is weird because you think, oh, it's a spoon, but the spoon is also an energy and it is also a, you know, there's a, there's a creativity that's gone with it and it's just perfect and everything is perfect and, and you realize the connection that you have to it and, and it, it's blown me away that that's even the way things really are. And that's what they're seeing all the time. So that when they say, we love you, they mean they love, they love you and they love this and they love, they love everything and everyone. And they're totally at, at peace with everything. And it's so, yeah, I, I want that more and more, you know, in my waking life, that's not something that I have to channel to experience. Yeah. And so that's the integration that, um, yeah, hopefully is happening and, and I think is happening more and more. And I can see myself growing more into that and, and just trusting that everything is the way it is. And, you know, it's keeping me more centered. And, but it's such an honor to, to be able to even see that for just a moment, you know, just one time it, it, to even just have that glimpse that that's the way things really are is, is incredible. So now what they're saying is it's more, they're sharing um, higher, higher um, consciousness, uh, higher consciousness information or higher, con higher consciousness communications is what we're having. Because they are in fact my oversoul. They are the part of me. You could say maybe they're the future part of me, but they're, they're, they're part of me as, as, yeah, the larger part of me, I guess that's how I would say it. They're not necessarily a, a collective of, they are a collective, which there's something about higher consciousness that they like to be in collectives. But um, yeah, they're just, they're, they're just they're wonderful. <laughs> their energy and their love. Yeah. No, that's who they are. And I don't know what else to say about it. Thank you for sharing your story. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your story. So, yeah. So we're gonna so, do a channeling of yeah, these two collectives. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, if you wanna experience the icon and Theos up close and personal, and you wanna ask them your questions, whatever it is you wanna ask, you know, there's no limit. You can ask, Everything. you can ask them about your own journey, spirituality challenges you have in life yeah questions about the collective yeah the transformation anything whatever anything. Is the yeah. Yeah. Uh, and if you're if you want to come to Amsterdam we're going to be doing it in Amsterdam on the 1st of October from 1 in the afternoon until 5 and it's going to be live streamed yeah. so wherever you are in the world you're welcome to join us and we'll also take a few questions from the live stream viewers oh yeah good um, so you can get your tickets if you head over to my website, which is louisek.net. Um, we'll link it um, in the description below the video. And we'll also put a link to uh, subscribe to your channel and my channel, I think. It's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and I have a live stream event coming up on 10-10. Okay. Uh, that's my birthday, so that's and, good. Yeah, on Karen's birthday. <laughs> I my is eight eight and Karen's is ten ten. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
and you can find more details about that on my website. And Karen has another big event coming up in California, right? Yep, I have a I have a couple things happening. I'm going to um, be on the uh, channel panel in December, December 30th in LA. And on the channel panel will be Rob Gothier, Daniel Scranton, uh, Nora Harold, Wendy Kennedy, Lee Harris, Sean Swanson, and Daryl Anka, and myself. So I'm very you sure excited you didn't about miss that. anyone. Huh? You sure didn't miss anyone. I don't think I did. I think I got them all. I apologize I didn't, if I didn't. But you can go to channelpanel dot, thechannelpanel.com, and the tickets, I believe, are... A hundred and th don't quote me. There's there's tickets on the website, but it's not going to be live streamed this time. You'll be able to purchase a playback, so it'll be in Burbank, California. So if you get a chance to come there, and yeah, I've got some other things, exciting things coming up. I'm going to be in a documentary called "They Call Us Channelers." I don't know if you know that, um, and uh, also uh, doing some other things. So, and in the future, I'll be doing some sound and mantra training. And I'll be adding that into my my channeling. So, I'm very excited. And, uh, about if, anyone, if anyone would like to work with us one on one, both Karen and I mm -hmm. uh, do private sessions with people. You also do that, right, Karen? Yes. yes. Yeah, we both work with people on Skype or in person, um, and that's a really great opportunity because you 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 have the channeling all to yourself, and you can ask whatever questions you want. For many people, working with Icon one on one like that is a very healing experience. We support people to really access deep traumas inside themselves and support them to release blocked energies and it can be really life-changing yeah I know we, we when we do the uh, live sessions sometimes it's a channeling uh, conversation and then there's generally some kind of meditation or healing that goes on depending and it's it's really catered to the moment and it's always very personal very intimate so yeah so, um, so my website is uh, about oneness.com and yours yeah, you is louisek.net yeah. but you can find uh, all the information and you can book if you visit our websites and uh, yeah I think that's it. I think that's it I don't know how many minutes we are but we're going to call this however many minutes with uh, Louise and Karen so yeah thank you for watching yeah thank you and it's been and, great talking to you yeah, we hope to see you on the 1st of October. Yes. Much love, everyone. Namaste. Namaste.